Today, I decided to pull from the Code Green Plant Vault. I knew I had a few diamonds over there in some of those episodes that I did that were my solo series. It is where I learned that I can speak by myself. I don't have to have a co-host. It is where I learned that I have a voice and I have other things to talk about besides cannabis. Yeah, I learned a lot there and I'm, I'm proud that I took a chance on myself. So I figured today I would just pull from two of those solo series episodes and put them over here on Love You Miss You Bye. I, they're not perfect. They're, they're far from perfect, but you know, you got to start somewhere. And I feel like the content of these two episodes that I chose is good enough to put over here on Love You Miss You Bye. One is from probably the middle of my solo series, so probably episode five. And the other one is the last episode I did before I left to start my solo podcast. So enjoy the episodes from my vault at Code Green Plant, and I will talk to you next Monday. Okay, enjoy the show. The Love You Miss You Bye podcast. Let's inspire each other. I saw that Suzanne Summers passed away. Well, my curiosity got the best of me and I needed to find out what happened because I know that Suzanne Summers is, was big on holistic medicine, natural healing, that type of thing. I needed to see what she passed away from. And that's what started my deep dive into this whole thing. The first thing I stumbled on, and I had heard about this, but you know, when you hear about things in the media, it can be very, very tainted to their own version of what happened. And it's never truly exactly what happened. It's a small, a small narrow view. Well, I had heard that she was a little difficult in this series and she, she was just hard to please and, you know, she was fired because of that. Because of her behavior, she was fired. Come to find out, that's not really how it went down. She was really essentially fighting for the equality, pay, equal pay to her co-star, John Ritter. Now, everyone can say, well, he was the star. He was the funny one. Yeah, he was. He was. But it's not three's company without Suzanne Summers. That's one company, one Jack, one Jack. So for her to make $30,000 an episode and for John Ritter to make $150,000 an episode, which is an estimate, I don't know for sure that's the total amount, but I do have a quote here, which does say 150,000 is what she was asking for. And it was comparable to what John Ritter was making. She went in there and she said, I would like to make $150,000 an episode. And the response to her was, who do you think you are? John is the star of the show. Then they reduced her uh, time, her screen time, and then she was ultimately fired. Well, I don't think that she asked too much. I think if anything, you know, John Ritter was the star. I mean, that's completely obvious, but he wasn't 150,000 versus 30,000. Like Suzanne Summers was a huge part of that whole thing. So to me, she was a pioneer and she didn't even try to be. She just thought she was asking for something that was right in her world. And, you know, I guess I would call her a pioneer. And I'm very supportive that she went in there because I'll tell you what, it is so hard to ask for a raise. It is really hard because the first thing that happens is self-doubt. Do I deserve this? You know, how can I go in there and ask for this? I don't, maybe I, I, I was five minutes late three months ago. I don't deserve this race. You know, you start talking yourself out of it and it takes courage to walk in there and say, I've done my research. I know that I'm worth this. And here's my, here's the reason why. This is why I deserve this raise. Because rejection is a big thing. Actually, I have a story because you know, I go on tangents. I don't just start and go in a straight line. I'm all zigzag all over the place. So here's my story. I did my research and I thought, I should get a raise. I start, you know, building myself up. I'm like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Okay. 
nobody's going to stand up for me more than me. I have to do this. Nobody can do this for me. You know, hyping myself up. I send an email to my supervisor at the time and I let them know I'd like a raise and here's why. And he says, okay, yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's set an appointment and we can discuss it. Well, I set an appointment with my supervisor at the time, um, the president and the CFO. I'm nervous as shit, nervous as shit. We go in there and I sit down and it's like I'm on freaking trial, trial. Like they start pulling out everything, not my supervisor, but the president and CFO. Well, uh, why do you think you deserve this exactly? I, 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 you've done this wrong, you've done this. And they start like going through things, which I, blowing my mind. I'm like, I, I, nobody's told me that before and I've been getting good reviews. All of a sudden I'm messing all of this up. I don't understand. Well, it felt like torture like, like torture. I left there and I felt like I wasn't worth anything, nothing. I, I actually left in tears. Like I can't even believe I would ask for a raise. Like I don't deserve a raise. Like, it was, it was such a humiliating, a humiliating thing that happened to me. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. Cause it was traumatic. I ended up getting an email later and the email said, sorry, we just needed to let you know that not everybody gets raises. And so, you know, these are the reasons why we didn't think you should, but you are going to get one. You are getting your raise. I'm like, why did you have to put me through all that? Like that, you know what it made me do? It made me question ever walking in there and asking for a raise again. I never wanted to go through that again. <sighs> It didn't stop me though. I ended up leaving the company. So there's that. And would I go today and ask for a raise? Hell yeah, I would. Hell yeah, I would. No, that won't deter me and it shouldn't deter you. And I want you guys to make good choices and get what you freaking deserve. If you deserve a raise, you need to sit down. You need to write everything down that you've accomplished within the last year, showing all the facts supervisors don't really like to, to hear your opinions. Not when it comes to money, not when it comes to a raise, you need to go in there and have your facts ready to go because they can't say anything to facts. You're not speaking like, I think I'm worth it. I think I deserve it. This is why I deserve it because I did bam, bam, bam. And I made you a profit of bam, bam, bam. I saved you money on bam, bam, bam period. That's how you get a raise. That's how you get a raise. Go try it and then let me know how it works out. I promise you they won't be able to refute it. Yeah. But don't just feel like you, you need a raise. Don't just, you know what? It's time. No, you better prove it. Prove it. Okay. All right. Now that we got that out of the way. So that's, that's what Suzanne Summers did. Hello and welcome to my solo series. I'm Christy Chanel and I'm so glad that you could join me for my final episode in Code Green Plant, my solo series. It's been such a cool ride. I've enjoyed, I guess, venturing out a little bit. You know, I was kind of scared to try this solo series. Just, I didn't think I could talk enough. I really, I didn't think I had it in me to talk for 20 minutes to 45 minutes to an hour, but apparently I do. I just didn't know it. Yeah. I was always scared. I always thought I needed a co-host and uh, I realized that it is so much fun to have a co-host, but it's also kind of cool to venture out and talk about different things and just, you know, almost learn a little bit about yourself. You know, I forgot half the stuff that I've talked about. Like, it's not something that I think about daily. It's not something that comes up in my mind randomly in the middle of the day. So sitting here talking to you, having a theme and a subject to talk about has brought out things in my memory that I forgot about. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to have to talk about it and to share it 
and to have some sort of time capsule out there for my kids and grandkids to listen to. I hope I make them proud. But knowing that this is my last episode, my final episode here on Code Green Plant, I just, I wanted to take the time to make this message to you. And thank you for listening to me rant about things that probably sometimes make absolutely no sense. But to know I find my way back home by the end. And so just keep hanging with me. You know there's going to be a reason for it. But the reason for this one is we are closing up 2023 and it has been such a cool year for me. I hope that it's been a cool year for you too. I had to sit yesterday with a pen and paper to write down the things that I've learned or been through or just highlights from 2023. It was kind of like journaling because I had to sit there and think about all the things that happened in 2023. It's kind of cool. And so because I had to do that and just did it yesterday, I'd like for you guys to try it. If you just sit down and you write down all your favorite things that happened this year, and then maybe write down all the things you're proud of and all the things you regret and all the changes you want to make for the new year, you kind of have your mini little time capsule too. I love journaling. It's one of my favorite things. I actually got Hannah a journal for Christmas. She likes to journal. My mom actually liked to journal. She had a couple of her own journals. Um, And I remember, because I was a little spy as a kid, seeing them on her dresser and opening them up. But they were in cursive. So at that point in time, I couldn't read cursive. So I didn't know what those little secrets are. But yeah, she had a red diary. Uh, I think my stepdad has it now. And one day I'll get it and I'll get to read about my mom's thoughts. But the point is, she wrote them. She wrote them. And I have about five journals. I have about five diaries that I have all of these things in. I've already talked to my daughter. I said, listen, these journals are going to you. And then you can put little sticky notes or copy certain pages and give them to your brothers because they don't need to read the whole thing. Um, that's just not what I want them to see, but, I, but I know that I've always been writing in my journal for obviously for me, but also as a way to communicate with my kids later in life, because I obviously know what it's like to lose my mom. And one of the things that I found, you know, after she died, I went to the computer and there was a poem because my mom liked to write poetry as well. She's very in touch with her feelings and very artistic in that way. I went to her computer and there was a poem that she had started for me and on my, for my birthday. And she had one, um, for, to her best friend, Celie. She had also, I saw the, uh, drafts of her writing one to Celie, which I think she actually did send her, but for me, she never got a chance to finalize and finish it but I have it and I put it in seal, a sealed plastic and I have that still to this day. So I so appreciate the fact that she put her feelings and her thoughts in, in writing. So yeah, out on Love You, Miss You, Bye, I'm gonna pull some of that stuff out and we can kind of read through it together and, and I can share some more memories because that's my favorite thing to do. It just brings me comfort and maybe you have something similar to that but I just want to make sure that I, I leave something for my kids because it's there's nothing like being able to know that you're missing that person and to pull out a journal and to sit there and read it like a book, you know, brings them right back. And that's what I want to do for my kids. I wrote some stuff down about my year and what I feel like I've accomplished. I got out of my own way and started a podcast on Code Green Plant. Then I got out of my own way again and started another podcast. I started two companies. Well, Simply Vibin was started before 2023, but I had Simply Vibin and then I started Christy Chanel LLC. I started a company. I had no idea what I was going to do with it, but I just knew I wanted to create my name as a, as a company. So I left it there. 
didn't do anything with it. And then once I discovered I was ready to do another podcast about human experiences and conversations that connect us, I knew that it needed to be under Christy Chanel LLC. And actually that came from my best friend, Lori, who's also an attorney who said, you know, you might want to separate that completely because I know Love You, Miss You, Bye has really nothing to do with cannabis. It's more about life. Also, I randomly posted a video short of me and a friend recording a the first podcast on Code Green Plant. This did not include Phoebe. It was me and a friend. And I clipped it, threw it on Facebook, threw it on Instagram, threw it on TikTok. In Facebook, it blew up. And so that video ended up getting like 131, 132,000 views. And I picked up a quick, cool 1,700 followers. So I'd say that was a good day at the office. Not every, not every day is going to be like that. That was one highlight of the year. So I loved the fact that I knew that there was a connection there. I'm hoping that I can make that same connection with uh, Love You, Miss You, Bye. But I feel like I already kind of did because a while back, I also had a viral video on Christy Chanel on TikTok. And so I have over 2000 followers on TikTok and it's just about life and being human and talking about working situations and dealing with corporations. And yeah, there seems to be people that are interested in that too. So hopefully that'll go well as well. I don't know. I mean, we can only wait and find out, right? You just got to keep moving, keep going. Big thing that happened this year is I turned 50, 50 years old. I was terrified to turn 50. I will tell you that right now. But guess what? Once I turned 50, it was no big deal. My body didn't start dying. I didn't start falling apart. I didn't like age instantly. It was another day in my life. And it made me realize Truly, age is just a number created by society to put you in a category. And unfortunately, a category that seems to to suck, apparently, you know, it seems to, to suck because we got to the point where we don't even allow men to ask how old we are because that's considered rude. Why would that be rude exactly? Um, I don't understand why asking a woman's age is rude. It's not. It's not. Unless, unless it's made to, you're made to feel devalued by the number. And you shouldn't be. I'm 50 and I'm proud of it. And you should be too. So, turned 50 this year. Yay me. What I have learned from 2023 is... I am enough. I am enough. I matter. I hold value. And the more I realize the value that I hold, the less I am to put up with bullshit. Nope. Quite frankly, I'm just not going to. I don't have to. But if you come with conversation that's pleasant and positivity, I'm all about it. Why wouldn't I want you here? I do. But if you're coming over here to be a negative black cloud in my life, yeah, I don't have time for it. And I hope that you have the same attitude. Hold yourself higher than to put up with garbage. Make that your resolution for 2024. No more garbage. I've learned I am human and I will fail. And that is good because every time I fail, I'm learning. If I wasn't trying something new, I wouldn't fail. If you're not failing, you're not living. I fail every single day. It's okay to fail. I'm proud of my failures. As long as I learn something and I'm picking up and I'm using that knowledge to get better, it's all good here. Now I'd like to know, did you try something new? Has there been something in 2023 that you're super proud of trying? Have you learned something new? Because the key is to keep this mind sharp. Keep it sharp. 
And the way to keep it sharp is to do things that make it think and make it pull knowledge and add knowledge. The more you do that, the crisper and sharper your brain is going to be because you're using it. You're not just watching TV and reruns and movies. I don't want you to sit there and just watch TV show after TV show after TV show. What are you giving yourself by doing that? Yeah, it's an escape from reality. And if that's what you need, then you need to do it. But there's other escapes. And that's diving into something that you like. Diving into something that you could read and get your mind going. A puzzle. Challenge your mind. Challenge your brain. These are the things that are going to keep you staying young at heart and growing as a person. So I highly recommend that you do that. I don't even really watch TV anymore. I, hardly ever. I do watch football. Dallas Cowboys, I watch football and I, I love the Dallas Cowboys. So that is something that I'll watch every time, every Sunday or Thursday or Monday, depending on when they're on. I will watch, obviously, if the weather is kind of weird outside. I live in Texas, so we will get like a tornado warning or something. So I'll put the TV on and, and I'll watch uh, the weather. You know, if there's like a special show on, I, I might watch it. But I'm not the type typically anymore to even put my TV on. There, there's probably weeks that I don't. Yeah, I think I'm changing a little bit because before that I had a TV in my room. I had a TV in the living room and I would watch it nonstop. That was my release. That was my escape. I was in a bad relationship. So, of course, that's what I'm going to do. Once I got out of that bad relationship, I realized I don't really need to watch TV that much. I would rather be learning and working on myself in some way. You need to check in with yourself. A lot of times people will try to numb things or escape from things instead of really listening and walking through it because that's just going to help you move through it faster. Feel the pain. Keep walking. Keep moving. Are you happy about this? Does this feel good? You know, check in with yourself and a journal will help you do that. I would like to say thank you for listening to me ramble. Thank you for making that connection with me. I may not see your face. I may not know your name, but I know that we've made a connection and I appreciate you taking this valuable time that you have every day to spend with me. Click the follow button and you'll get notified when my first episode and future episodes are released. It's also up on YouTube, so you can go there too and follow and you'll get notified when it's ready to rock. It's all set. ChristyChanel.com is up. It's live and podcasts will be uploaded there. So you're more than welcome to go there to listen to us to listen to me streaming um, in a podcast streaming platform or on YouTube. I'm just so lucky to have you here. I want you to know that. Be safe, think smart, make good choices like coming back. Love you, miss you, bye. L-U-M-U-B Podcast. Love you, miss you, bye has been brought to you by Christy Chanel LLC. But if you're looking for more information or want to follow us on social media, go check out christychanel.com. All the podcasts are streamed there and the YouTube episodes are there. So why not? You can also listen where all podcasts are streamed. This includes Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And lastly, thank you to you. You. Yeah, you. The one that's listening or watching. I appreciate you so much. Love you. Miss you. Bye.